Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to discuss CX Programmer and using differential up and differential down functions within the push button and within numerical functions. So let's get started with a simple example uh, as way of demonstration. In this simple example we'll use a 24 volt power supply connected to a blue push button which is connected to my PLC, CP1H, and the output is just a simple green lamp. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to simulate what happens when I press the button twice with a second in between. So one press of the button, I will go from having a logical zero on the input to a logical one and a logical zero again on the input after four seconds. And I press the button a second time after a break of a second, I will go back to logical one, which is 24 volts. I will stay at that for another 4 seconds and as I release the button I will go back to logical 0. So that's what the input waveform looks like. In my code if I have the contact connected directly to the coil my contact and my coil will have the same logical value i.e. 0, 1, 0 here, 1 again and 0. This may be advantageous in many cases but in others it's not and we'll look at some examples later. But let's look at what happens if I don't want that to happen. I have the option to configure my contact as either a diff up or a diff down. For a diff up, the value, logical value will stay at zero as the button isn't pressed. But as soon as the button is pressed, it will go up to a logical one, but will only stay at a logical one for a single cycle. It will then come down and be at zero again and will remain at zero for this five seconds. Contrast that to the push button when it's pressed, it stays logical one for the whole four seconds. When it's, the button is pressed again, this is repeated and I get one logical one for one single cycle. You have to remember that your ladder logic starts at the start, runs through the entire ladder and then goes back to the start. It's a continuous loop of the code with the variables resetting as it comes back to the start again. Your code actually runs hundreds, thousands of times a second. So one single cycle is only occurring over a very short period of time. You can also use what's called a diff down. So it will stay at logical zero, even though I've pressed the button, and only come up to a logical one as I release the button for a single cycle. I then press the button again at five seconds, and I come along at logical zero and back up to a logical one. So let me put a timeline on here and you can see how the two can be compared. So my physical input on my push button will stay at 24 volts when I press it. But look what happens to both the diff up and diff down. For the diff up now, 1 back to 0, 1 back to 0. One more time, 0, 1, 0, 1. So that's basically how the two different differential functions our operations work for both diff up and diff down. Let's try to create a practical example to demonstrate this and I'll show you some of the limitations, especially when we're using especially when we're using numeric functions. So to start, I'm going to go into CX Designer or CX Programmer. I'm going to configure a new project. I'll create this as a C CJ2M. Use Ethernet IP 102.168.1.1. I do have a detailed video on this. You can check the link below on how to configure your project from scratch. In this project, we're just going to add two values together and we're going to activate the light at the same time. So let me add some variables value 1, and I'm going to make that an integer. And I'll put it into working bit 1, value 2, and I'm going to make that an integer, and I'm going to put that into working bit 2, and we need a total, which is where I'm going to put the answer to these, when these two values are added together. I'll put it into working bit 3. I also need my green lamp.
and I'm going to put that onto an output this time. It will be output 0 0.00, sorry, 1.00. And I need an input as well for my push button. In this case, I'm going to simulate with a HMI, but this could be a physical push button as per my diagram. But because I'm running this at home, I'll use a HMI to simulate it. So I'll call this HMI underscore push button. And I'm going to put that into a working bit 0 0.00. Okay, so there's my variable set up. And let's see what I want my variables to do. Value 1 and value 2 are going to be added together. And the total output it into the total field. And the green lamp will illuminate when I press my push button. So let's code this up very quickly. So my contactor is going to be for my HMI button. And I'm going to add an instruction. And my instruction is going to be plus space. And it's going to be value 1 plus value 2. That's going to go into the total. So the output there is total. I'll link a video below for working with numeric operators in more detail. Now I'm going to put in a contact and this is going to be for the green lamp. So I've got a green lamp. So very straightforward, single, a single rung of code here. It's my HMI push button. We'll add value one, value two, and put that into the total. And at the same time, illuminate a green lamp to inform the user that the push button is being pressed. So let's create an HMI to go with this. So this is the HMI from the template. You can download this from the link below in the description. So let's add some numeric inputs. One, two, three. And I'll just put a label on here. I'll just change this label to value 1, change this label to value 2, I'll change this one to the total, and we also need the push button, so I'll just add a simple push button here, and that's my HMI interface at least configured. Go back into CX Programmer. I'm going to go to my session and I'm going to copy my variables. And I'm going to copy them into CX Designer under the symbol table and paste. If you're not sure what I'm doing here and why I'm copying these variables in, I do have a video that goes into configuring CX Designer in a lot more detail. So let's go and assign this input and I'm going to assign this to value 1. I'm going to assign this to value 2 and I'm going to assign this to value 3. And I'll assign the push button to HMI push button. So now I've configured all the values, there's one last thing I need to add, and that's just the lamp to show that the push button is being pressed. So let me select the lamp and configure that to green lamp. In reality, this would be probably a physical lamp that the user will be able to see and know that they've pressed the button. This kind of feedbacks to the user are important when we look at HMI design and interface design. So let me go ahead and test this. So I go to Tools and Test, save my settings, connect to CX Simulator. So I've selected 5 and 5, and let's press the button. Lamp comes on, and it says 10. So that works fine. So now let's try something a little bit more complicated, and we'll see some of the limitations of having of using the diff up and diff down. Back in my code. At the moment, I'm adding value 1 and value 2 to a total, but I may want to store that as a grand total. For example, 
The number of boxes passing through a sensor can be counted by a sensor and the value entered into value 1 with the total number of bottles in each box stored in value 2. So you want to add the two of these together to work out how many bottles have passed through and display this to the user. But the user might also want to know over time how many bottles have passed say every hour every day. So we need, we need a grand total in order to to give them that information. So let me go back offline, simulation offline, and let me add a grand total. I'll just call it G total, I'll make it an integer, and I'm going to put that into working bit 4. So that's in working bit 4, and that's my grand total. In my code, I'm going to change my code a little, and I'm going to add another instruction. This time it's going to be plus again, and I'm going to take the value that was in total, and I'm going to add that to grand total. The output of the operator, the plus operator, is put into a separate memory address, and then that separate memory address is transferred into the resulting word, which in this case is going to be grand total. So what will happen here is, I'm mending the total to the grand total. Now let's just add back my green lamp. And let's go and let's just copy the symbol across for grand total into CX Designer. And let me just add it to my interface. And let me add a new label. And let's run our code and see what happens. So my values, I'll add 5 and 5 again. And I'm going to press the button. Oh. Okay, that didn't work, did it? So what's happening? Well, my grand total is continuing to rise as the operation happens. So my total function is working, but my grand total isn't. That's because during this period here, as I've pressed the button, the operation is still running. So it's running once, again and again and again, hundreds of times within that four seconds. So what I need to do is I need to use either a diff up or a diff down. And that should fix my problem. So in this case, most advantageous or most people will want to use a diff up because it's as you press the button. But in some particular cases, the diff down might be more appropriate. So to do that, I'm going to go back into my CX programmer. I'm going to just work offline. I'm going to select my input. And from the menu there, you can see I have my differential and I have a choice none, up or down. So I'm going to pick up. You can see now that there is a little arrow to indicate that this is now a differential input. So let's run the code again, go back online. So nothing's changed here in my CX designer. All I've done is just added the differential to the CX programmer or to my letter. So five. So five plus 5 is 10 and there you go so now it's only counting as it should do but there's a downside my output now or my lamp is no longer illuminating so while the numeric function is working correctly my user is no longer informed that the button has been pressed There's a second way we can apply the differential operator. We can apply it to the instruction itself. So to do that, I'm going to go back offline and I'm going to select the function here, or the instruction, and I'm going to go into instruction help. And that brings me up to instruction help for this particular operation. Students find this a little bit daunting at the beginning, but if you spend a little bit of time 
and you try to get to use it or get to know it, you'll find that using it's a lot easier. So I'm told here that my variables that I can apply is this little at sign. So that is available for me to use. So what does the at sign do? Well, let's have a look through the manual and see what it says. The manual sign tells me that the at sign will turn on the differential for that particular instruction. The percentage sign will turn it off and the explanation mark will do an immediate refresh. We will look at this in more detail when we look at the move function and how the move function can be used in different ways. I'm just going to add the plus or the at in front of the plus. If this looks slightly different to the version of CX uh, programmer that you're using, this is probably just an issue with Windows 10. It works fine on Windows 7. Okay, so now I've added the at sign to both my operators, and I'll just remove it from here. So now we have no differential in the input, but we do have on the instruction. So let's run the code. Back online. Remember, we haven't changed anything with our CX designer. So 5 plus 5. And I press the button. And look. It now gives me the answer of 10. And the light illuminates. So the lamp is illuminating. And my function is working. Just to recap. We have two operations available, the diff up and the diff down, and they will only run for a single cycle, even if the button is pressed for a number of seconds. The use of diff up will, will operate as the push button is pressed, and diff down as the push button is released. This can be counterintuitive to many students who see the diff down as pushing the button down, but it's actually the reverse. We can also use the differential operator on both the input and we can use it on the instruction. That's the end of this quick tutorial. There is more tutorials coming and I'll go into this a little bit more detail when we start looking at building up a new project which will be a calculator where we'll look at using the plus, minus, multiplication and division. Thanks for watching.